I know what this looks like, and no, I am not a scalper, I promise. I just am building a PC and uh, ended up with three 5080 graphics cards. So today we're gonna unbox all three of them and I'm gonna go over some special features, some base clocks, some boost clocks, but most importantly, we're gonna go over physicality, aesthetics, and what this graphics card might look like inside your build. And at the very end, I will tell you guys which one I'm choosing for mine. So let's start with my least favorite graphics card. But first, we have to do something quite important with this box, something that my fiance told me you must do this. So. And by the way, we're starting off with my least favorite of the bunch. This is the MSI Inspire. It just doesn't look so great, the color scheme to me. But more importantly, I would say maybe base clocks and boost clocks and different things we need to look at. But yeah, I'm just not a big fan of the way this looks, but it's a 5080, so obviously I'm quite excited to open this up either way. Oh my God, the moment of truth. Whoa, okay. So before I hop into this, I just wanted you guys to know that this is the first time I am building a PC. So if I get any of these points wrong, please forgive me. Uh, but we're just gonna hop right into this here. Has this little piece of tape. It's open now, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, take a look at that. Whoa, okay. I don't wanna touch anything I'm not supposed to touch, but that's the, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cool. Um, okay, so it's a lot nicer looking than I thought in person. On the box, when you look at the box, it kind of looks more I don't know, kind of like a creamy bronze color, which I didn't really vibe with, but now that we're looking at this right here, I feel like I see people prop up their graphics cards just like this, so I think that's okay. I'm just gonna show this off to the camera a little bit. Spin those fans, and then guess what? I'm your biggest fan. It has all these pieces of plastic that are covering it. I'm just gonna leave these on for now. Or am I? Oh, oh, I almost ripped it. I almost pulled it off. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, for sure, there are other graphics cards that I like the look of more. I was really hoping to get an ROG Astral, but <laughs> that's looking a little bit out of the picture at this moment in time for a few separate reasons. One being it's so dang expensive and two being you can't pay enough money to find one of these things. It's so hard to get a graphics card. And I went to Micro Center, I'm telling you guys, I actually camped out. I was one of those people that was overnight just hanging out in the lines and early mornings just trying to get my hands on any 5090. I could not for the life of me. So this is it. This is what we're looking at with the 5080 Inspire. Uh, I actually like the look of it a lot more than I did on the box. So. I'm just gonna set this down really carefully and let's jump into the specs so you know what to expect. So after a little digging online, I was able to find out that the base clock on this card is gonna be $22.95 and the boost clock is $26.40. This is the OC edition, which stands for overclocked. So we're working with some speed here. Speaking of speed, each one of these cards is boasting 16 gigabytes of GDDR7 memory. Now for the special features of this card, I'm just gonna read straight off the box for you guys so you know what you're getting yourself into. First off, we have a Storm Force fan, seven fan blades, claw texturing, and circular arc are designed for optimal airflow with minimal noise. So apparently this is gonna be really quiet and really good at cooling. Second off, we have a nickel plated copper base plate. Heat from the GPU and memory is swiftly captured by a nickel plated copper base plate and transferred. Where it's transferred, I have no idea. I'm assuming it goes right back into Jensen Huang's pocket. That's right, the more GPUs you buy, the more money you save. Number three, core pipes. Core pipes feature a square design to maximize contact with the GPU base plate for optimal thermal management. A sturdy metal back plate strengthens the graphics card while airflow vent design reduces excessive heat. So I'm assuming that all of these features, these are not actually features, these are just uh, ways to disperse heat. So all of these third-party cards, these aren't really features, my bad. Uh, these are just different ways that the graphics card is dispersing heat so it doesn't melt or get really, really hot. Some of them have been melting. I don't think these ones have, uh, I'm not sure on that. This is not that video. If you wanna talk about GPUs melting, that's a whole nother video. Krakatawa! 
I've just found the actual key features section, so let me read this off real quick to you. Dedicated ray tracing cores, dedicated tensor cores, NVIDIA DLSS, Try saying that four times really fast. Game ready NVIDIA Studio drivers. NVIDIA app, NVIDIA broadcast, and NVIDIA G-Sync. Boom, and use Afterburner to overclock your card because that is in this, I think, yes. Overall, I'd give it a seven out of 10 on looks compared to some of the other graphics cards out there. It's not the best looking, but it's really not the worst like I expected. As far as performance goes, it's pretty good, but I think we're going to see better today. So and before we close the lid on this graphics card completely, I did want to mention that it has one HDMI 2.1 port and three display ports. So that's pretty cool. Moving on to the brand that I was not really expecting to love, Gigabyte. I've heard some uh, things about their graphics cards before, but this one, I mean, I'm just falling in love by the looks just for the looks so far. Now, this is another OC card coming in at a whopping 2295 base clock and a 2730 boost. I believe these come overclocked right out of the box, but I'm not sure. So take that with a grain of salt, but let's get to unboxing. Here's what the front looks like. Whoa, that is an incredible looking box. Something about the all black just really does it justice. Here we go. I'm gonna let you guys get first look. Whoa, what is this, a thank you card? Looks like a warranty. Moment of truth. Oh my God. I think this looks much bigger than the Inspire. What the heck? Oh yeah, this is, Whoa, this is heavy. Okay, okay. I know weight doesn't always equate to quality, but if we're going off weight alone, this thing is extremely heavy and it's taped up three times instead of one. So it looks like we're dealing with some heavy metal. All right. Oh. Oh, no way, dude. This is sick. Whoa. Did not expect to like this so much. Pew, pew, pew. Gaming starts here. I'm not going to undo that tape. That is so crazy. Oh, my gosh. Whoa. This is gorgeous. I mean, I can't even. Okay. All right. I think I was simping a little too hard for the MSI card. The MSI Inspire just got shattered by this card right here. I love spinning these fans. I could pl play with this card. I don't need to make this into a computer. You could just play with these cards. <laughs> Guys, my filming skills can't even begin to do justice for how beautiful of a card this is. But I'm gonna start showing off some of the features, so maybe we can make up for that. The WinForce cooling system delivers superior thermal performance featuring a combination of advanced technologies. I'm gonna assume they mean fans. The newly designed fan exhibits significantly lower noise levels and higher efficiency. Vapor chamber and composite copper heat pipes. So we have significant piping going on here. Screen cooling technology allows air to pass through the extended heat sink for better heat dissipation. Now it's looking like this card also boasts one HDMI and three display ports. And I'm assuming that's gonna be the same for the last card. There are just some things that are industry standard, it seems like. On looks alone, I'm feeling extremely generous and I'm gonna give this Gigabyte card a 10 out of 10. I mean, I don't think there's anything they could have done to make this look even more visually appealing. And you really just got to check it out in person. I was not expecting this much metal. In any case, fantastic job, Gigabyte. I hope it plays as good as it looks. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, this is the card that I was most excited for out of the bunch, the 5080 Asus Tough Gaming OC card. And if the pictures online are meant to be believed, this is the most beautiful card out of the bunch. I'm not so sure now after seeing that Gigabyte card. That thing has me simping hard. So let's see if Asus can pull this off. The base clock and boost clock is exactly the same as the other card, 2295 and 2730. Gosh, this is the moment of truth. Here we go. Ooh, this is actually so much fun. <laughs> 
Oh my god. I did not mean to do that. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Let's just talk about the, the case real quick. Let's talk about this, uh, this box because each box had its own thing going on. If we're talking about the MSI Inspire, it's a very normal box. It's a small box. It's a small card. It's a very minimal card. But when we're going up to Gigabyte, there's this black box, white glove experience going on. And you can just tell that this is all elevated now. So the MSI Inspire did not really inspire uh, me all that much. It did exceed my expectations though. But this, this is the most beautiful, crazy, gorgeous box out of all of them. It's tough gaming. Okay. Don't let me down. Oh my God, this is so cool. This is so cool. Cables. Oh, okay, that's sick, that's sick. There's a magnet in here. That didn't come with any of the other ones. Asus gets points for goodies. Tough gaming, Velcro thing. I mean, there's there's goodies in here. Look, guys, it's not just cables. You gotta, you feel like, okay, we did something here. Okay, weight-wise, probably exactly the same, if not slightly lighter than the Gigabyte card. And I, I think that this just feels right, okay? The MSI Inspire did not feel so right compared to these two. And would you look at that? We got this secret little, okay, I gotta put the card back in because we have this, we have to read this first. We got a quick start guide. Now that's what I was looking for. Thank you. A thank you letter. Thank you for purchasing an Asus graphics card. See, uh, it's, it's really the small things. And when we talk about an experience, I think Asus so far is really hitting it on the nose, really hitting it right out of the park. You get a thank you card, you get goodies. Uh, now, I do believe the Asus Tough Gaming was the most expensive out of the three. Now, I'm gonna put price comparisons up so you guys can really see for yourself what we're looking at here. Now, we all know that the graphics card purchasing process has not been fun, and the prices have been increasing due to tariffs or whatever you wanna call it. We really don't know. Is it supply, demand, whatever. But Oh, one piece of tape. Wow. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, fans, fans, I'm your biggest fan. Let's just be honest, this is so badass. Tough gaming all over the card. I think it's slightly lighter. Definitely slightly lighter. You can actually see the exposed piping right here. Okay, so there's some different stuff going on with the Asus Tough card. I'm assuming this is going straight into their Tough branding because we start with durability. Military graded chokes, MOSFETs and capacitors, phase change GPU thermal pad, a protective PCB coating, and dual ball fan bearings help ensure long-term durability for your gaming build. And that's for sure tough, but let's move on to cooling. Asus Max Contact Design, a vapor chamber and a vented backplate optimized for airflow, works in tandem with Axial Tech fans, drive air through the entire array, keeping noise levels down and GPU temperatures under tight control. We need to talk about reliability. Auto Extreme Technology is an automated manufacturing process that helps ensure reliability. Asus GPU guard and steel GPU bracket reinforce the die and a 304 steel rear I.O. bracket provides firm mounting. Now that's a lot of big words and I'm sure they mean something to somebody. This card utilizes GPU tweak and comes with one month of Adobe Creative Cloud and what they call Muse Tree. I'm not familiar with it, but I think it's a creative software. I need to mention one thing about this card. From what I'm seeing here, it says two HDMI 2.1 ports and three display ports, which is kind of mind boggling to say the least. I mean, this card really over delivers on every aspect, but I do believe that it's the most expensive card. At the end of the day, I'm giving this card a 10 out of 10 on looks. It really delivers on what you see in pictures. That grayish gunmetal design looks incredible against the chrome accents. And my overall score for this card 
is a 9 out of 10. And if only it was a 50-90, it would be a 10 out of 10 and be going in my build. But the truth is, none of these cards are going in my build.